Oh, you've stepped away. Oh, that's so... Well, hi, guys. Um, I'm glad that someone's here. You know, at least one of your uh, very many important hosts is here to talk to you today. Uh, hello again, Terra. You miss? So, Daryl sorry, left I me with his chair. I had a BRB. <laughs> no. Um, For a very good reason. Just... <sighs> got to get... Got to represent... Oh, you got the shirt on. Oh, yes. Oh, the Stark shirt on. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I mean, see, I keep on calling it a Stark shirt, but everyone gives us wrong because it's, it's ghost. It's and, actually ghost, isn't it? Yeah. It's ghost and Jon Snow's... Well, listen, if he was brought up in Winterfell by a Stark, he's a fucking Stark. And Agreed. fight fighters if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> <sighs> oh. This is actually terror, to be fair. Like, this is Stark versus Stark. It is going to be exciting a little bit. Not because the players are good players. The, the players are both terrible, right? <laughs> no, none of these guys have done anything impressive ever before. Uh, <laughs> but no, this is going to be interesting because there's a lot more on the line, I think, here than in other times. Like, I, think, um, I think both of these players have actually learned a lot since they last played. And I'd like to think that this game is going to be playing out a lot more differently to, uh, to what we've seen before. No spoilers. No spoilers. Hashtag already know the result. Hashtag recorded earlier. <laughs> yeah. This is totally live. It wasn't live. recorded earlier, by the way. This is completely live. This is live. Um, this is genuinely live. But there may be some one that we made earlier. Um, uh, content coming up soon. <laughs> uh, you, the, mi uh... you missed it, but um, Terra resubscribed for his fifth month in a row. Terra's been here for five months. Yeah. He's been around for a lot longer than five months, but this is his first five months of subscription. Yeah, so we can only pretend that he's been for five months, right? Yeah. Before that, he didn't exist. In all fairness, so I'm pretty sure he's been around from very close to the beginning. Very, very close. So, uh, uh, sorry, I'll... I'll you have, <laughs> Should we yeah, focus on the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, See, I this think... is absolute classic right um from uh, the start players that we've seen before um it's the the am amount of uh, grid lines they draw <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, i think it is i think uh, i love it i absolutely love it because it clearly means that they understand all the distances and everything uh, yeah and the necessities for let's quickly blast through the lists uh, so we've sure. got on locks side we are seeing a howland um uh, howland list Cranig of course. List. Uh, so we've got a unit of trackers with uh, Cranig Wind Warden. We've got Stark Outriders, Summer. Um, we've got uh, Stark Sworn Swords with Brandon Hodo. House Tully Sworn Shields with Mira Reed, which obviously gives these guys the Cranig um, uh, Cranig keyword. keyword. And then we've got some uh, Stormcrow Mercenaries with Hosha. Um, that doesn't give them Cranig, does it? No, no, uh, no she's. Uh... She's not a Kranich. She's a wildling. She's a wildling, yeah. But that's so that's how they got Summer, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, Usher, so Usher's Summer, Summer and Shaggy Dog's uh, brand. Summer comes from Bran Hodor and Shaggy Dog comes from. Oh, uh, that way around. That way around. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, NCU's have got Walder, Aria, and Howland, of course. Uh, and then on Ariaka's side, we are Guess what? It's a Howland list. <laughs> It's a div quite different list though. So we've got um, Stormcrawlers with Mira, uh, Shaggy Dog, or Outriders, Stormcrow Mercenaries with Osha. So we're really doubling down on the uh, the um, point deduction for attachments. Um, Sworn Swords just on their own, and Berserk as Brandon Hodo. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is there is a bit of diversity in the list, and we've got uh, the other of the sisters, so Sansa uh, and Walder, as well as Howland on. Uh, Ariakas side, so um, yeah. is Ariakas German? No, come on, no, you no, your uh, no, your nationalities here. Because um, I've I'm said, pretty sure, is pretty sure, N line too. in chat will be insulted by calling Ariakas German. N line being his uh, his Canadian brother in arms. Uh, so I, so I sent a, I sent a, a shirt to uh, um, Stark player from the Energy TS League number one. In Germany, was that Lox? That would have been Lox, yeah. Yeah, probably. yeah. Sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. Lox, so Lox is uh, is German. Yeah. Um, I do yeah. know both of the real names for both of them, because um, uh, there are quite frequent posters on stats and uh, and actually on the main group as well. Um, but it's uh, it's Clarence who's uh, Ariakas. 
Right, so Clarence Daniel. is... Oh, yeah, that's cool. And, and who's Daniel, who is Lux. Cool. Um, is Canada a real country, Terra? Um, pretty sure that N-Line will tell you that Canada is a real country. Although, I th think it might not be. Hmm. <laughs> it's uh, well, well, rather watch a stock mirror than a barrow mirror. Yeah, fair enough. Th at least things will die, or mm. something will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen I've seen barrow mirrors where they're both playing like Renlies, and it's like, haha! If yeah. I don't attack you, you can't do anything to stop yeah. me. And it's like the other player's like, haha! If you don't attack me, you can't do anything to stop me. <laughs> Hang on, wait. <laughs> yeah. I watched um, Chris posted a uh, Stalks versus Baratheon, um, which I think was his is that year season finale for the first season, Chris. Um, sure, that's season one over, yeah. Yeah, so I think next season sounds pretty cool because it's all going into um, like uh, battles focused on specific events in the books instead of just being like super metalists or whatever, uh, but. I watched some pretty horrific and now Storm you know Stormcrow mercenaries are uh, sorry Stormcrow archers are renowned for being absolute horse poop but uh, I think there was a <laughs> a fairly successful couple of rounds of shooting in the first few turns with um against Chris's I think it was it against was it against their Berserk, or their great axes uh, and mm -hmm. it wasn't uh, a pleasant time so well, at least we saw the archers do something for once but um, the only other thing they're good against is free folk and we know how that goes usually <laughs> but definitely um so youtube.com forward slash sunday slaughter uh go check out chris's bat reps because they're awesome it's like the the production value is totally insane well, i would go as far as saying that the premium ones available right now mm -hmm. um, yeah for for what he for the, the effort he puts in um but yeah uh so, start mirror. Uh, it's what we expected. It's a it's a matchup we've seen before. Lark's Ariakas, uh, something we've cast, something I've cast before. Mm -hmm. um, I think they did. They have played. I think, as far as I'm aware, in, in actual tournaments, they've played twice. Played once in the original NRG in the semi final, where uh, where Ariakas uh, got one over on Lark's on yes. quite uh, the end of and turn who one. Did he go on to play? Was his Carlo? No, Ariakas yeah. went on to play. Um, uh, Stannis, Stannis in the final. Stannis, it was Stannis uh, 1000. Made yeah. a fool of Stannis. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, and then Larks obviously has uh, has won some German stuff, done really well in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, and some international stuff. And I think he beat Ariakas in, I can't remember which tournament it was. Um, it might have been Gold on Dice, uh, one of the early rounds on Gold on Dice or something. Um, or it was in one of the other uh, TTS tournaments. Anyway, um, so yeah, they're one for one at the moment, as far as I'm aware. So it's the um, it's the decider. Ooh. So uh, quickly uh, go back through here with stand. I know we're probably all sick of hearing about it now, but it's um, it's the four quadrant game, really close deployment, uh, and basically. You awarded points for every quadrant you control, starting from the uh, end of round two. If you have the most army points in the zone, you control it. If your commander's in the zone, you get it's a, worth an extra three points, and you can sacrifice NCU um, activations to go into a zone. You can only have one of your um, one of your NCUs in each zone, um, but you can sort of buff up basically. Uh, your points in the zone. But so the interesting, the interesting conversation we've had, and um, I'd like your thoughts on this one again, Daryl. Just quickly, um, this was a, a changed game mode mm -hmm. um, from uh, the beta version that was tested. Yeah. The beta version being that the yeah, opponent's zone yep. were three a point. That's right. Um, yeah. Whereas, and and you could put any number of NCUs in one command in one spot, yeah. and commanders weren't worth three points mm -hmm. um, for army value uh, reasoning. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I still juries out about the changes. Um, so, it favours running certain styles of lists, which can put things in and then do effectively extra actions to activated units. Things mm -hmm. like Bolton Bastard Girls mm -hmm. with swords play. Um, you know, we saw that Stannis against Frioku. Mm -hmm. uh, sudden charge, of course, for Starks. Fainting maneuver for free folk. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Baratheons, uh, Baratheons have got a, um, a big advantage, I think, in the game mode just because of all the extra activations to get in their deck. Um, and I mean, we saw when we played, uh, sorry, when we casted the original game, which was Brett versus George, and um, so Brett from Small Council, George from Three Sales, um, we saw actually a ton of sacrificed activations from Brett's side, purely because that um, that deck threatened extra activations if he was to attack. Um, yeah, he couldn't afford, couldn't afford to take the risk. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to check up on chat. Um, Sunday, when I figured Ariakas is Clarence from uh, Gorilla Miniatures, my mind exploded. Yeah, yeah, Sunday. Uh, yeah, Chris, that's a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. true. He uh, it's why Gorilla Miniatures it's for what it's worth. Uh, if anyone doesn't know about Gorilla Miniatures, they produce some really good content as well, actually. Um, and uh, I'm not. I'm, I'll be honest, and I, I put my hands up. And Chris, you can you can shout at me later for this one. I'm not a massive fan of battle reports, um, purely because I don't necessarily like watching them back. I don't necessarily feel like I learn much from them or. Uh, or get a huge amount from them. Not not saying that they aren't good learning tools. Mm -hmm. They're just not my thing. Um, but honestly, the Sunday Slaughter ones are good. And actually, the Gorilla, Gorilla Miniatures content that they do around battle reports is actually mm -hmm. solid as well. So uh, they're the two, believe it or not, the two that I even spend any time watching at all. So uh, kudos I, to them. I must say, I did... So Gorilla Miniatures is a, a channel that I don't spend a huge time on anymore. I used to a lot, be and mainly because... I'm quite a big fan of like new and upcoming games or smaller games, and I like to sort of see how games like that play before um, I, I dive in. And uh, one thing I will say about Ash is he's very consistent at getting new rule sets, playing them, and um, sort of going from there, like, you know, just sort of displaying games. But He gives a, a fair assessment of them as well, I think, as well. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know. Like I think, you know, sometimes you just don't gel with... Um, certain personalities of certain presenters um and i just I, I don't know why but i just don't ever enjoy watching ash play games um i'm sure he's a lovely guy but i just it, it's just like a a content like like gelling thing i just don't i i just don't get it like i, I can't get into his channel um and i used to watch it quite a lot because i play in, i did play competitive infinity quite a lot um and i used to like seeing because he's he's a fantastic painter um, but uh, yeah, just I don't know. It just it's not the channel's not for me. But um, I think definitely right in as far as production quality, content like variation. Um, the miniatures always look really good. Um, he's a bit liberal with the rules sometimes, but uh, so don't I wouldn't use it quite as a learning channel. Um, but I mean, if I played as many games as Ash does, uh. I don't think I, it, yeah, I don't think I would be able to keep a hundred percent on every um Whoa. rule set. Hang on, we just saw the first thing in the game and this is gonna blow everyone's mind. It was Howland taking letters. Right. Yeah, I just thought I'd point that out, like pretty big, pretty big first play there. Uh, exactly what we'd expect. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like it's the best option. So, I mean, Lark's got first player. Um, I believe it was... I think it was Lark's choice uh, to choose deployment. Um, but uh, but Ariakas actually giving the first player over to Lark's, which is, of course, actually a bit of a loaded gun. Um, I spoke about this a lot before with uh, with different casts different, on different streams. Um Taking letters on turn one, although obviously quite a strong play, um, if you've not got the best hand, you're probably going to mulligan it away anyway and draw three more cards. So you're better off just uh, just not taking the first turn um, in the Stark Mirror. Uh, and then it gives you more impetus on turn two as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a clever play, I think. Um... What are you thinking? Oh, we saw the bags come out, which is, I'm guessing, just uh, remove the token. Yeah, remove the token. Uh, and it obviously also activates um, the. Uh, oh no, it doesn't actually. So it doesn't. No, he doesn't have. Um, he doesn't have a stormcrawler tent, does he? So 
That makes no difference. Nice mirror. Hmm. Yeah. So, do you think? Do you reckon that was uh, as important as it could have been? Uh, I don't. Letters is letters, isn't it? I think so I'm talking about the bag, so taking that oh, bag. The bag. Yeah. yeah, just removing... It, it does remove the token from a mm -hmm. unit. Um, but in the end of the day, like, we're going to see... We're going to see round taking. Yeah. Four wounds. Ouch. This is the problem with uh, Stormcrow Mercs. And uh, that was the problem with taking bags super early as well. Yeah. We see Walder come down, or potentially not. I think it's with it's bag gonna people. blast a blast a wolf. What's that? You blast a wolf. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't dislike the bags play. I just obviously it is risky. Hmm. So, uh, uh, I think. Uh, what what are you thinking as far as the flow of the game so far? Like, um, uh, uh, do you have any favourites for the match? I know it's pretty 50-50 because if you go as far as... So is he just sacking Sanzas? He is, he's just sacking Sanzas to turn the... Um, uh, I know as far as ability goes, they're pretty similar um, in levels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've both got quite a lot of renown as far as uh, the... Stark players go and um they've both proved themselves in tournaments before um so do you think it purely as a list uh sort of building exercise do you think either of them is particularly stronger than the other uh, i don't know because uh these obviously they've got the two list format right and they've chosen these lists over over their other list because this is obviously the anti Stark list. Mm -hmm. uh, I do personally believe that uh, Lark's list is slightly better purely right. because I really think Cranagan Trackers are very good, um, a very good five point unit. But that being said, like Brand Zerkers that you see on Ariakas' side, I mean, that's just an absolute classic. Yeah, so, uh, so the, I think the one thing about the Berserkers is they're tried and tested and they always put out high amounts of damage I very rarely see them not doing much damage um you know we're looking at the the best save in his army is a four which will be taken to a five from Sundran. he's got sansa uh no he hasn't sorry has he no he hasn't he's got yeah he has got sansa he's got, so he's, he's, got, got sansa. he's got no free he's got no free move but he can dig for a um a swift maneuver what's it so we've lost to a pmp but we'll just have to go with it yeah, it's fine. We'll uh, we can constantly report on that. It's not an issue. Um, sorry for any viewers there if we uh, if we kind of like jumped out there at all. Um, so we currently have zero viewers. Does everyone? Left? Yes. No, uh, you uh, obviously you DC'd uh, oh. from. It was just a, a momentary, hmm. momentary fail there from your internet, by the looks of it. Um, yeah, I've been having some bother with it today, actually. They've had the engineers out. Oh, right now. Um, all right, so we are we're back on the we're back in the room. Um, yeah, Virgin man. So um, the first real, I guess, thing that we've seen so far, aside from the losing the rank on. Um, the Stormcrow Archers, we see Shaggy Dog moving up the board. Mm -hmm. uh, putting me put in quite an aggressive position. Obviously, the uh, the Palisade here uh, awesomely positioned against the Palisade so that he can't be attacked. Um, now, interestingly, in the Stark Mirror, um, there is a lot to suggest that the dogs on this particular game mode are actually a negative. Sure, the activations are positive, but they I'm not going to say too much. So they come for nothing in zones. Exactly. And they give, and away, they give away points. Yeah. And actually going up a VP or two in this game mode, if if honestly anything I've seen, can be can be game winning. Yeah. Um, in in Steelmate games, uh, the, it, I mean, we see, we saw that in um, George and uh, Brett. Uh, it was literally 11-11, yeah, was 11, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and just one unit dying was the difference between... 
So Brett, uh, Brett, because the difference was is that Brett got the three zone play, yeah, and could have won the game if he'd have just held that. But he lost, he lost Ghost in the process, yeah, and he lost the game because of it, because uh, he lost some points on the board. Um, it's uh. Yeah, uh, got like wolves in this game mode, they are susceptible to dying because people run things that kill wolves because, let's face it, Starks are the enemy. Um, so they're free VPs in Here We Stand. Um, a little reminder that, for anyone who didn't, didn't know, Carlo did choose um, the game modes to be anti-Stark. He chose game modes that did not favor traditional Stark games. He did not. He chose game modes that didn't favor meta lists as mm. much as he could, because um, he wanted to see variation. Didn't stop fifty percent of the field bringing Starks though. Yep, Bog Devil Ambush, uh, absolutely lethal to Wolves if you're not careful. Mm. Big time. In line, bringing out his uh, his pro plays there. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you think here? Do you think we're just going to see a lot of shuffling? Uh, uh, what first just... turn, or for the whole game? I think for for the first turn certainly. So uh, what I'm interested in seeing is uh, the Stormcrows actually doing some work in the game. Uh, the Stormcrow archers. I know they're not the most efficient points wise uh, and, and dice wise, but this is something that was spoken about in previous games of this game mode as well. Having some ranged ability in this can make a big difference. Um, and even if it's not super high quality, we all know that uh, morale tests can definitely negate any sort of planning that you do. So, yep, yeah, we've got Bog Devil Ambush. When an enemy combat unit activates, D3 plus 2 automatic hits if they're within long range of Chronic Wind unit. Only rolled a yeah. 1. Yeah, so it's 3 total. Uh, but it looks like Ariakas is going to roll 17 defensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's interesting? It doesn't say. Um, uh, so, Bog Devil Ambush doesn't actually say uh, w within the long range of a friendly Chronic Wind unit. So, actually. There's a minor technicality. E oh, there's, that's a dead ho uh, dead wolf. It is, wow. Um, so it doesn't um, actually say uh, within long range of a friendly... <laughs> friendly it actually doesn't. No, so it, realistically, he's um, he's is within long range of a chronic range. I'm sure that's not how it's uh, meant to be played. I don't think that's rules as intended. But um, it's definitely rules as written. Is that, is that actually legit? Is that legit a thing? I'm just thinking, because actually, rules is written. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, <laughs> Lark's being the uh, the gentleman that he is copying his wolf and putting it in Lark's uh, zone there, so should he want to bring it back on, he can. Um, of course, slightly stupid to bring wolves back on in this game mode, because what you're doing is giving three points back to the board. So Chris, and... Chris, uh, so Chris just mentioned there. Same with Russ's card proc off any bolt unit within short range. So that means even uh, your opponents, because if so, that's not you. I mean, technically speaking, I you know, if you, rules as written, yes, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's right mm -hmm. <laughs> and not in intended. But I don't think there's an FAQ on it. Um, I'm gonna start playing Starks and Stark Kranag lists. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bolton list just, and just try and snipe the yeah, just, just you'd go to every tournament with a, uh, a two list format with a stock, uh, a howling list and a, a roost list, yeah. Um, all right, so, um, the the wolf going down puts uh, larks up a point, and this is actually exactly what we saw with the uh, the Ariakas uh, larks game from way back when in the NRG mm -hmm. uh, original tournament, um, the the major difference here, of course, being that uh, it's Lux who's gone up the point, and Ariakas who now has to do something against it, but he does have Walder himself that yeah. is going to cause wounds. Now, if I know my understanding of anything ever, you see that Aria, and you see that Walder mm -hmm. that aren't on the tactics board, and with Sansa activated and didn't taking a slot, my friends... This is Stark play. This is Sudden Charge. Is mm -hmm. it not? Um, it's the only thing that I could think. But yeah. 
potentially. This is some charge being like just. So would what? Who do you? So do you think this is going to be a um, uh, potentially a berserkers unit or? It could well be the. I think the thing is, and this is, this is what we have to understand. Ariakas can make a play here. I believe he has last activation. I'll double check. That one, two, three activations there. One, two, three activations there. Yes, yeah, so Ariakas is going to be the last activation, mm -hmm. meaning he can put something um, into potentially combat range. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't want a sudden. He wouldn't want to put it into uh, sudden charge range this turn, because um, he would have to use his Walder to to get the movement to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but he very much could put something into a position and go right. I am going to charge you first yeah. activation next turn. Yeah. Um, now the the thing there is is that he's going to have to go in. He's going to have to do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. It is Brandzerkers. They are the unit in the game that can delete things. Um, yeah. But I guess we'll see. So of oh, yes. course. Uh, so, minus one to hit. so do we see who, who did Howland influence? So Howland influenced um, these the, outriders and and the Kranich Wind trackers. Kranich Wind trackers. Okay. So move the Howland out of the way just so you can move the unit. Um, I would be interested to see. If you know, there's always the chance that Lox has got that uh, sudden charge in hand as well, um, because Lox still hasn't put his third NCU down. Uh, with you know, there's always uh, we've got to remember that they both have the same deck, so everything that's strong in Ariakas's deck is just as strong in uh, in Lox. Yes, this is true, um, and this is about understanding the mirror match, right? Uh, understanding that at any time one of these players can can whip something out, uh, mm -hmm. but knowing that the other player might have access to that too. So you can see some uh, measurements going on here. He's uh, looking at the mirror read unit, understanding where where that's going to have range to, what kind of threat that puts on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, putting the stormcrouches like this, by the way, is actually uh, a really good idea. Um, it really puts pressure onto the opponent to come forward yep. uh, and to threaten, while so uh, potentially allowing options um, for his own aggressive plays into the zone, mm -hmm. uh, to try and basically push Larks back. Right now. Who are your uh, who are your bets on? Uh, so list wise, I actually prefer Ariakas's list. I do mm -hmm. think, um, and that's just for my personal play style, I suppose more than anything. However, I do suppose, uh, you know, Lox's list, it does have a lot of similarities. I think. We get free attacks with the the Kranigs get free attacks after a maneuver or a treat, don't they? Uh, yes. A free miss shot. So, you know, they've got extra ways of attack in there. To be honest with you, other than the fact that the Berserkers are over here, um, it really is. A, it's much of a muchness, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. What I'm hoping to see is uh, some big activations with uh, the Berserkers. Um, and hopefully, we've, well, we we'll all know how efficient the stock outriders are. And I think from. Was it from the TDS League or was it from the First Builder League? Uh, we saw uh, Carlo did a lot of stats about Outriders, didn't he? Um, and they really do pull their weight. Um, I think you'll find that was the uh, the NRG um, original one. The TDS League, putting, yeah. Putting all the numbers together on mm -hmm. spreadsheets and things before the website even could do it. Yes. Um, and logging all the games and my God, I was having to do it manually. Jesus. <laughs> Never again. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so when we did all those stats, one of the things we found out, uh, I could go back to the spreadsheet if you want, but we we basically we made a formula up to measure effectiveness. Mm -hmm. I say made, we, we discussed and we came to a conclusion of what we should use. Mm -hmm. um, and we 
discussed efficiency unit uh, unit efficiency yeah now it's worth remembering that the nr the original nrg league was i think of the first tts tournament we saw really run mm-hmm. and it was the first time we saw like the meta if you will that was the global but, meta and as yeah, opposed the global to local meta. meta yeah uh but um but it was indeed Outriders that came out as number one top dogs mm-hmm. as one of the most efficient units out there. And that was just after the uh, update rule, the updated rules, right? They got the plus one to yes. hit, so they were mm-hmm. hitting on threes, and they got bushwhack. They lost Swift, did they lose Swift Retreat? But got bushwhack. Um. So yeah, the the uh, eight dice on threes, free maneuver. Yeah. This uh, the six points, seven points, uh, seven. seven points, seven yeah. Points. It's, so, it's, it's so a good seven points. The the thing that makes them ridiculous is not actually the eight dice on threes necessarily, although that is really good. Mm-hmm. It's the six dice on threes for so the second rank. Yeah. Like, that's actually, like, that's infantry, like, decent infantry levels of second dice ranks. Um, that's like, decent infantry levels when you play free folk. <laughs> well, no, no, it's, it's decent infantry levels across the board. Oh, for right? second rank, for second rank, sorry. For second yeah. rank, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they compete with infantry level attack stats on mm-hmm. the second rank. Which is very rare for cavalry. We're yeah. used to seeing like Knights of Castle Rock and, and Tully Cav who just have their dice pool absolutely yeah, decimated. Decimated, big drops, isn't it? So Yeah. Oh, uh, end line there. If he loses, we're kicking him out of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, we you know, you shouldn't have losers in Canada because Canada is full of winners, uh my understanding, winners and maple syrup. Mm-hmm. Um and poutine. That's, or poutine, yeah. Oh. Poutine is one of those things that I don't think so, can ever be quite explained. It's well, if you had to explain it to someone from the northeast, it's cheesy chips and gravy, but better. <laughs> Literally, it is cheesy chips and gravy. <laughs> but just better. But just better, yeah. Get big old chunks of cheese. Mm. <laughs> it's making me hungry now. I've just had pizza. You just had pizza already. as well. Greedy. Right, so I think one thing that we're all going to have to bear in mind with this match is that we've got two people who do a lot of um, uh, very calculated movement and a lot of pre-measuring and stuff, so um, I wouldn't expect, what's the word, um, you know, eruptions of action. Um, it's, I, think I think when it comes, you'll see it come and it'll be big. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is and... going to be more like watching a game of chess than... Oh, God, yeah. yeah. This is what, I mean, this is why, uh, for anyone watching, you know, this is uh, this is why watching this kind of game mode is actually, like, in my opinion, one of the most important things you can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, watching these two players play. Because you can learn so much about how to play the game just by watching them. Yeah. Um, understanding like how to to measure up and, and understanding threat ranges i mean look how far these two battle lines are away from each other they are yeah, both so, essentially so how about often, midway in their halves how how often do you see in non um top tier games how often do you see people not deploying on the on the line because 99 times out of 100 people will deploy as far forward as they can to, to force the action as soon as possible. Um, the only caveat, I suppose, to that is things like wolves and things, which maybe you might, or when you're playing free folk and you don't actually have enough room in your deployment zone. Um, well, some people say that because they want to engage in combat early, you know, because the game is a war game, mm-hmm. um, even though I personally hate saying that things are war games because people immediately assume when it's a war game in my opinion, that it's just exactly that. It's just about fighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Actually, if you think that this game mode is about, it, or this game in general is about fighting, mm-hmm. then you're missing the intricacies of what makes the game so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's things that have been addressed in a lot of games now. Um, a lot of games you were able to just win by sheer weight of fire and just blow people off the board and regardless of how well the other person plays as far as the objectives go you know if you table them or whatever you win um and points never really come into it um especially things like 40k just sigma all that kind of stuff uh, although you're trying to get onto points you you're almost always just trying to kill people as well um i think infinity did a really good job of um starting that uh, because in Infinity, it's possible to table someone and still lose, because it all comes down to um, 
the objective points. And I think um, 40k with ITC made inroads into the same sort of thing. And now 9th edition, which is basically ITC, but with GW Brandon on it, has done the same sort of thing. And they're heading for these like competitive um, game modes with, uh, you know, methods of scoring and scores being important. Now, I know you get cushion victories for tabling, but I think people who understand this game more often play for points than they do for um, kills. Uh, and yeah. that, that's the way you should play that's definitely the way you should play and not be a total dice monkey like me and just run things up the board why don't why don't you just do that, it's very fun <laughs> no I agree I agree, I, I prefer the uh, the intricacies of having more than just a, a dice vest, now I know that the dice can sometimes go against you or with you or what have you and I know that yeah. that's, that's part of being a dice game but ultimately like the game should encourage skill in list building. It mm -hmm. should encourage skill in terrain choice. It should encourage skill in tactic zone decisions. It should encourage skill in placement and maneuverability. Mm -hmm. um, and there are games out there that don't, and it's sad. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, that's the big thing that I've had with now. I, I love um, World War Two as a, a theatre of the imagination mm -hmm. as well as the historical context of it. But I've never really played a, a World War Two game that wasn't just, you know, they would mask it as like, oh, you know, you've got to get to the tank that's in the middle and rescue people. But in actuality, you were just trying to kill each other all the time and there was no sort of um, competitive level to it. And I know historical and competitive competitive doesn't always go together. Um, but I, I like competitive style games that make you think instead of just, um, instead of just being a visceral thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've seen the kind of semi-expected play that we we talked about, where Ariakas had this one activation advantage or one activation placement that he could then uh, bring something forward and put it into attack range or charge range. Mm -hmm. And we see here the Stark Outriders YOLOing forward uh, to within, what, that's a, call it seven inches away from the Kranig Trappers. Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to be a one plus charge if he, he chooses to make it. Um, but he's very aware that the area coming down on the horses meant that the Stark Outriders on Lark's side could have some options. Yeah. Now, Lark's has to make a decision here with the activation. Um, he can either go left and swing into these Outriders and try and get into them, and uh, who knows, there might be a dev charge in there, so we're talking about moving 18 inches, um, yeah. the 6 movement plus the 6 inch base charge. Yeah. Oh, sorry, just sneezed. Is, <laughs> is Swift Manoeuvre infantry only? Yeah, Swift yeah, Advance sorry, yeah. is uh, Swift infantry advance, only. Yeah. Um, so he hasn't really got any super threatening melee um, units anyways, so has he? I know, so I know Swan Swords are very uh, efficient for what they do. With Brandon Hodor, they're even better. Um, and I know Swan Shields are nothing to be uh, sort of trifled with, but they're not merely powerhouses. Uh, no, swan no, swords not. can be when the um when they have serial pharrell in i think yeah they, they... well even actually even without serial pharrell i mean it it's worth remembering that um crit blow is a good ability <laughs> right yeah but crit blow on its own isn't that good no uh, it's just a couple of more hits here and there but really what makes this so powerful is that it's crit blow on a unit that's rolling eight dice and you're usually going to be doing that with re-rolls, yeah. and you're hitting on threes. Yeah. Like, that is exactly the same stat line, attacking on threes with eight dice with crit blow, that champions of the stag run at mm -hmm. a ten-point cost. Yeah. Um, that is nothing to shake a head at. No, no, uh, no. You can add extra things in that with Vicious and Sundering from Stark cards. These are all, like, you know... Yeah. I mean, I, anyone who's heard me, heard me cast, anyone who heard me talk on games before, you'll know that I'm a big... Uh, I'm actually not a fan of the likes of Bolton Cutthroats and uh, Stark Swan Swords because of the lethality of them. Um, and it unfortunately turns the game into a bit of a grinder. I charge and kill you, or you charge and kill me. Yeah. Um, and you're, and just, yeah, you you're, trying, to get charge, that, you're but... trying to get that first charge, really. On, or, or you're trying to get that... The first good charge. Yes, and so we saw it here. Was that the Devastate Impact? Yeah, Dev Impact that we saw. There's the two automatic wounds, the six, uh, the 18 inch maneuver. So this was the risk that Ariakas had to 
kind of take. Mm -hmm. um, and we see the charge come through here. So three misses uh, on the initial roll, but ooh, only six hits. This is uh, there's only eight hits in total if you count the two extra wounds. Yeah. Unlikely to kill the outriders here. I'd have thought. Yeah. Three saves. Uh, so the uh, the it's two wounds, not uh, two hits, because of devastating yes. impact. Yeah, so they took the two. They took the two hits. Um, or two wounds. Sorry. Um, Plus another three. Yeah. So it was uh, uh, five total wounds. Past the and past the morale. Past yeah. the morale check. He's going to spend the uh, panic token though to re-roll the six, which is wise, and that's a fail. Is, what's the what are they base six? It's base six. Yeah. Uh, so Minus the pass one, because they've got um, the weirwood there. I forgot the weirwood. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That was a fifty chance. That was a fifty-fifty chance on the one dice roll. So yeah. Now we see Walder come down onto swords. We're going to see, oh, look, sudden charge with those Dark Swan swords into the flank of the Outriders. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a real, this actually has a real chance of killing the Outriders because it's exactly the same as what the Outriders just did to the other Outriders. Yeah. But this time the unit will have crit blow. Yeah. Crit blow, hitting on threes, minus one to save. And uh, what we do, do they still have swift retreat? They do. They do have to so they need to kill them in this order, don't they? Yes, yeah. Problem is, though, uh, there's no real good place for them to retreat to, is there? Because well, the funny thing is, is if, if they do choose to retreat, all that gonna... does is it frees the Stark Outriders yeah, yeah, up on yeah. so, our active side to do something. Yeah. Chase them down or go and kill something else. I feel like maybe keeping Sudden Charge would have been a better thing to do, though. Be uh, because he could have charged for free and then activated Walder and just taken the zone for the free attack, and it's the same, the same outcome, um. But you keep a sudden charge in hand. Yeah, there's obviously an opportunity. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that is big saves. Um. So four wounds there, and then the panic check at net zero. We'll see the panic come out. That's a fail. There's the difference. It's four wounds from the yeah. panic. Uh, that's not... Like, Ariakas passes the panic there, mm -hmm. and his unit remaining on two ranks, even, even though it is only just two ranks. Um, so, question is, are we going to see a swift retreat? My instinct is no. Um, but if he does, is he going to just try and... He can't even tuck in, can he? Because... Uh, I mean, he'll die next turn anyways. But they st they've still got an activation left, haven't they? So I suppose that's probably why he did it, because if they do retreat, he's always got the potential to... Yeah, he's going for the switch retreat. Yeah, he should do. That's It's enough to make the retreat. Um, yeah, he's going to, he has to go that way, yeah. He'll have to go that way. But he needs um, to end an inch away from... from yes, but with, he gets the pivot. He gets the pivot, so he can pivot out of the inch like that, and that's fine. Yeah. So, and he's basically trying to align so that um, that unit of so and swords can't um, yeah. can't actually get that uh, charge off. However, there's always a chance of a, a swift advance in hand. Yep. Which, I, I realistically, mm -hmm. I, I mean, w would you use it on the berserkers or would you use it on the the so and swords? I wouldn't use it on the. I wouldn't necessarily use it on the berserkers because uh, I would want to have. Um, Another of uh, Lark's units committed first. Hmm. Um, the so uh, Francesco asked, yeah, does anybody remember what the rapid assault from Outriders used to be? Yeah, used to be when you take horse, you can replace the horse with a free charge for the Outriders, um, yeah. which is not a terrible ability, but actually wasn't really required. It, it didn't. It was a good ability for the Outriders, but the problem was the Outriders themselves were not. weren't as good then, but the. They weren't, they, as weren't good. As good. they didn't have bushwhack. Fast. No, no, they didn't have bushwhack, and there were fours to hit. I think yeah. in seven dice. They, I don't think they had eight dice. Um, so they, uh, they, had eight, they had eight dice. Did they? But yeah. um, but yeah, they were eight fives rather than eight sixes. No, maybe, the real big difference. Maybe, the actual real big difference. Just is a, that the four plus got reduced to a three. Three, yeah, and and they got bushwhack, which is a really naughty ability. Mate, do you, can you much. just um hold the four for a couple of minutes? I just need to nip the loo. Yeah, no, that's fine. Cheers, man. I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. It's all right. Um, so, uh, it's just me and a chair. Everyone praise the chair. Uh, Twitch primes for the chair. Um, that's the way we should think about it. Uh, yeah, this is pretty hype. Um, this Remember, the, the units coming back on um, is going to make this game really different because you're going to see... 
And I think this is probably why both Larks and Ariakas were risking their Outriders first. They um, both believe here that they can get their Outriders onto the back lines with Sudden Charge and things like that. Units like Rickon, Osha, Mercenaries, and things like this just die. Um, <laughs> a chair! There was a chair! A chair! Um, so yeah, uh, I actually think this is really kind of clever play by both players, recognizing that the Outriders are somewhat expendable. Um, Oh, you're about to go to a pumpkin patch. That sounds way more interesting than... No, it doesn't. Uh, but it does actually sound quite interesting. Um, I'm, am I surprised? Oh, God, no. It's October now, isn't it? Jesus. No, yeah, we should have uh, We should have pumpkins. Um, God, is it really October? God. Six months of my life sat inside, pretty much. It's really sad. Oh, well. Um, yeah. So uh, this is pretty much the end of round two that we're seeing now. Um, it looks like we're seeing, although I'm not 100% sure, we might be seeing Aria, although they haven't actually moved the round marker on. We might be seeing Aria move the Kranigman trackers. I'm not actually sure. Shout out to Bartender for the reset there. Boom. I uh, love a good uh, end of round reset. Uh, it's my favourite thing about the, the game mode now. Although it does make me forget to do steel uh, hits, which is pretty annoying. So, um, we see the... We see the area move. The area move over on the uh, top side, the uh, thing comes over, and they're making the attack. It's currently 1-0 to Lark's Brett, uh, going into round two. And the... Oh, wow. The Kranigman Tracker's getting all eight hits onto these Outriders. This is uh, looking... Uh, is that a one? No, it was a one. Uh, four more wounds to the Outriders. Puts them within the pack check range, but of course they're at plus one from the Weirwood. So that puts them on five. Um, see how we go and that's a pass that is a pass on 5 um, and so the Outriders retain um, yes it was a Bog Devil Shaggy that was uh, the point um, so if you are watching us uh, today and you've not really been here before or you are new to the channel Drop us a Twitch subscribe if you can, or go and subscribe to the many other Song of Ice and Fire content creators out there on YouTube, such as Sunday Slaughter, Gorilla Miniatures, Song of Ice and Fire Dash Stats, Northern Realms Gaming, uh, Small Council Radio, although they don't do YouTube videos, they do podcasts, um, uh, Tabletop Warden, and of course, head over to the Guild. Um, the Guild has loads of content on loads of different things, and I should probably get around to actually doing what I was told to finish off the Guild drop for this month. I just double check. Was I told to do anything? No, I wasn't. Good. I've done my bit then. Um, so yeah, head over to the guild and check out all the content that they make. Um, and all the other great content creators out there. Um, so, the opening move from the Kranigmans doing the Warden, the Aria move, and the shot leaving the Wardens on three wounds remaining. Um, it is now Ariakas' turn first. And we can see here he is making a lot of thoughts. And we see Kranig Traps come down on the activation of the Stark Swan Sword. So these Stark Swan Swords are now going to be at minus two move. Uh, that's five, take away two is three. Quick maths. Um, I wonder what we're going to see. Is this in charge the Outriders? I think he is going to charge the Outriders by the looks of it. It's alright, Brett. It's the least I could do for a fellow guild member. Also, Mythical Studios. I completely forgot about Mythical Studios. Go check out Mythical Studios. Mythical Studios are great. Mythical Studios. Anyway. Um. All right. So we. It sounds like they're having a conversation. Um, with this. Uh, with this charge. Um. It's. Uh. 
Oh, are they within long range of a Kranag? Yes, they are actually within long range of a Kranag unit. Uh, they're going to always oh, going to play Swift Advance as well. Um, so interestingly, here the Swift Advance is actually played first, um, or effectively comes out first, which means he gets the uh, move full movement first of all, and then it gets reduced by two to the second section. Yo. Oh, can we have the chair stream back? Chair stream back was great. <laughs> He was super charismatic. Man, I have been, uh, I had a Nduya pizza earlier on, and man, I'll tell you something, it's nice on the way in, but it's not nice on the way out. <sighs> I know, I know the feeling. Oh, oh dear, classic. <laughs> classic tray error. This tray error that you see, guys, I just want to have a, just make sure you guys know, this is not a, a Song of Ice and Fire miniatures bug for the mod. It is actually a bug on TTS. Hmm. Um, the way that in items interact. Bartender is trying to work around it, but he has yet to find anything. Uh, we've been working with him to try and see if there's anything we can do at our end, but really it is just entirely the TTS mod. Um, uh, Alright, so what did you miss, Daryl? I'll recap it for the viewers at home, and of course you Thank in you. your home too. Thanks. Uh, the Starks and Swords came in, they did a lot of damage to the Outriders, they retreated out. I was here then, saw. yeah. Then the round reset, and we saw Aria being activated to move the Kranigman slightly forward, and they did the, their order after the move shot, and they decimated the Outriders, leaving them on three wounds remaining. So the round reset and the uh, Berserkers didn't activate? The, it's the first activation of uh, Ariakas' turn. But the Berserkers hadn't activated last turn? No, they had already activated, he just passed them. Or just like shimmied them. So he's swift advanced um, in there. He swift advanced the berserkers to there, and then he's going to declare a charge into the flank of the outriders, which is probably in. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is in. See, I'm not 100% convinced, but I'm pretty sure Brett just steals random people's babies. <laughs> And then uh, is that, is, says like, like you know, like like presidents and prime ministers and stuff do, like where they just just get pictures taken with people's babies so they look all wholesome <laughs> and everything. Yeah, Brett's actually just an evil person who hates children, but uh, he just does loads of photo ops with children. <laughs> yes, he's even said it. Uh, send a picture of me doing my best Chris Tran modeling. Yes. Oh, shut up, man! Uh, I please, when, I, I want, I want a full collection of people. Of people um, wearing those the t-shirts doing that pose because it's it's I'm gonna make it the biggest song of ice and fire TES slash content creator meme going. Uh, that is five wounds to the outriders, which I believe leaves them dead. Uh, and I know that I know that we saw is it Shaggy Dog die earlier on, but I'm gonna say it anyway. First blood. First blood. From the old Unreal Tournament days. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ultra kill. Ultra kill. These berserkers are gonna go godlike. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope they do. Actually, no, yeah, I was like gonna that. say me, me too. Uh, unfortunately, though, that was the activation, right? It was the activation with the swift advance. Yeah, but he does get to YOLO back because uh, he got the overrun. Mm -hmm. But as we know, what well, that's like a maybe it's a seven or eight inch distance between those units. There, that is completely coverable by Stark units. Also, shout out to Ariakas for making his card super big. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, we've seen Univar Reyes go. Is this just a spare tree? That's a spare tree on the bottom there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's one of uh, Lark's phantom units. Hmm. Special rules deploy it on the board and make measurements from it. Uh, then, once you've finished deploying it on the board, remove it from the board. <laughs> See, he's done it again. He's doing it again. He's got one there, and he's using another one. <laughs> this is classic, classic Lark's play, this is. Just keep bringing on more units, that phantom units, and your opponent just eventually loses. <laughs> oh, honestly, Brett, don't worry about it, man. I can't believe it. Uh, so, uh, Brett got a t-shirt from TES League uh, mm -hmm. for, for being a podium player uh, All right. and 
so I asked which, him, which one did he choose? Well, so choose? so this is the <laughs> this is the thing. So I messaged him asking him which one he wanted, and then he told us which one he wanted. Uh, and then I was in the middle of a night shift ordering them, so obviously I wasn't really operating at hundred percent, anyways. But I ordered them the totally wrong one, <laughs> um, and I told him I ordered them the totally wrong one, uh, and apologised. So I ordered him the right one. So I sent him two, um, and we ended up having like a thirty-minute discussion about how he wanted to reimburse us for the second T-shirt, and I was like, no, no, no. Honestly, it was my fault and everything like that. Um, but he ended up did he he did reimburse us for the second one, so oh, like wow. kudos to him. Um, but he just mentioned being courteous there, and I think that's something that I've noticed difference between Americans and English people. Like I think <laughs> there's a lot a lot better manners in America than there is here. Like and yeah, enjoy, man. I hope you have a really nice day. Yeah, we'll we'll update you, Brett. Um, we'll either send you a European flag for good old larks or some uh, some poutine. Canadian flags. Poutine. For, yeah, some just some poutine for for our I'm and, gonna do that. A, a naked mountie riding a moose. I'm gonna just build that meme right now. Two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so chat. Let's get some predictions. We've seen where where. Yeah, even Stevens so far. Uh, board state currently. Who is your money on? Gun to your head. Who you have to pick someone. Who are you picking? Personally, I really like Larks's position here. Um, the main reason is that um, he can kill the Outriders this turn, but the Berserkers aren't in the best position. Now, it could have, of course, Sariakas could have sudden charges and other things in hand, but um, but he can catch quite a few units here, I think, and pick them apart with his slightly superior numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, he has, obviously, in the bank, a unit of Outriders to bring back on next turn. Next turn, yeah. As things stand, I think we're more likely to see two of the yeah. units dying. And he can only bring on one unit a turn, and if he goes a unit down, that's where it goes really bad. Yeah. Uh, so I do prefer Lark's position slightly. That being said, as we know, the ultra kill Great Axes, uh, sorry, Berserkers, Berserkers, could well change that all around. Uh, and Line, you are correct. He does have that additional... Um... Sudden charge, and it's called Sansa. Yeah, we're talking about. I was talking about this yesterday. I uh, played a practice game against Stannis, mm -hmm. and um, if a Stark player draws like half decent cards at the start of a game and they have Sansa, it's it's really hard. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, not impossible, but really hard. So I think we're seeing a ranged attack here. Oh, do we get a reroll, Mrs. Oh, because the skin's unactivated units. Yeah. Um, that is a lot of sixes. A lot of sixes. The Easter Rossi water dancers. Yeah. Um, so we're four plus saves with those guys, right? Yeah, four plus. That's uh, um, four you've, wounds, you've which is enough to four. kill you. Yeah. So they can come in anyway on a flank. Flank within six inches. So those uh, those two flank lines that you see on the board mm -hmm. and also in your own deployment zone. Oh, well, it's six inches from your own back line. Right. So realistically, they're going to come in on a flank, aren't they? Almost always, because yeah. they, um, they obviously compete, but they only come in at the start of the round and they come in activated. So it's, uh, it's more difficult than that it is to use. But of course... You know, you see, um, you see things like uh, sudden charge, obviously coming to massive things here. Mm -hmm. um, so interestingly, nobody's taken horses yet. No, I think we're going to see uh, quite late tactics boards play because the, of things like sudden charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately I can't, so we had uh, some sort of uh, glitch earlier on and I got kicked out of the game and now they're in the middle of the game, I don't want to disturb them. Um, so we will just try as hard as we can to shout them out as they come. I apologise for that, but... It as a, as a rule of thumb, to anybody playing, um, if you host the game, you can quite easily set up a third hand. Um, 
and it allows anyone who is spectating to actually go into the game and interact a little bit with the, the game board. But just be aware, obviously, it would show their hand to the players and uh, so on and so forth. But I do recommend it. Um, I have actually asked Bartender. Oh, no, I haven't. Okay, so we, we've just seen um, Chronic Traps. Minus yes. two to uh, movement, which is a mm-hmm. uh, big concern he's going for charge here. Uh, Ochi failed. And, yes, he rolled one. Yeah, Andy becomes weakened. So this is going to be a panic check here, and this is actually massive. Although I don't really... I mean, Summer could charge this unit, but I don't really think anything else can. No. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, no, so the Sworn Swords can't. Uh, there. No way. No way. You could fit on the flank. There could be a flank charge. Um, uh, they probably are flank, they're not in they? the flank. They're not in the flank, I don't believe. I think, I think there might slightly... be, you know. The Swift Advance, they definitely are. Horses are still available as well. Yeah, I mean, the horses here is what I would kind of expect. Although you've got to be careful from the Brand Zerkers getting sudden charged again with the uh, Sansa card. Actually, this is a play as well. Halland onto Swords, mm-hmm. where you can withdraw the Kranigman Trackers two inches get the shot against the starts on swords just to maybe get a couple more hits in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um drop my rank which actually does those two extra dice being lost does turn down the lethality a little bit it does and it makes um so every wound you lose on a unit of swan swords makes stark fury a little bit more um like a bit more bit of pill to swallow doesn't it that those d3 wounds yep until you hit the the final rank of course yeah Oh, not okay. a great roll though. So they're four plus, right? Marks. Yeah, four plus. Only two hits. Uh, with the forty, a uh, four plus. Sorry, you're expecting a wound here, maybe. He's, uh, yeah. He gets one, and then it's another. Pa- I mean, it's enough to drop. That's all he wants. Enough to drop the rank. Yeah. Um, Fail panic check here would be devastating. He's got uh, the weird wood. Right. Yeah. And Howland goes onto that unit, making them just a little bit less scary. Mm-hmm. Mitigates part of Star Fury, anyways. Mm-hmm. So we're looking at. Oh no, he's changed his mind. So the um, the storm archers are activating and threat unseen comes out, um, and they get minus three wounds because they're at minus one, and they actually fail that test. Uh, what's their base? Eight. Wow. Base eight minus one puts them on a nine because they have one destroyed rank. Uh, this mirror, I mean, this unit of um, storm archers, like legitimately. If you were Larks here, I might Walder take the crowns. Mm-hmm. Walder, maybe he's the Berserkers to turn off Bran to stop all that kind of like scary stuff. And then Crown Zap the bloody... Do you not think you could just uh, Walder and Crown Zap the... the Actually, um, to, just to guarantee it. You take Walder, you take Crowns. Mm-hmm. You Crown Zap them first and then you can resolve the Walder claim. And if they've got one wound left, you can just... So you them. can resolve it afterwards? Yeah, yeah. You can resolve the... Um, when this unit claims a tactic zone at the same time as claiming the tactic zone because they are actually simultaneous. Hmm. Um, so you can do, to choose to do something with the zone first. It's quite important with things like uh, with Walder because mm-hmm. you can claim the zone. Resolve the zone first, like doing a panic check and then so we're find si- out... We're actually seeing them... Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, we're seeing... always going to have to say Ari onto the letters. This is what I'd have thought. Two cards and a condition token. Um, what do you put on? Like a panic we token? Can, or we can those weaken berserkers, those berserkers, yeah. That would be my bet, anyways, because that's one of your big threats, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, he's going to go panic. He's going to go panic onto the he's, Stormcrows. He's doubling down on just killing that unit of Stormcrows, isn't he? I don't that, actually like that this no, much because. That being said, you know, I think. Uh, killing this unit of stormcrows, having a unit of stormcrows walk on in your back, in your flank, um, could be pretty nasty. It is, except that Ar- Larks goes first next turn, so he always gets to do something about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, more importantly, having two units dead means Ariakas can only bring on one of them, mm-hmm. and that is a huge part of this game mode's meta. In is yeah. in my opinion, if you can kill two units in a turn. It is actually more devastating than killing one unit every turn. And Outriders is probably preferential to um, to the uh, Stormcrows, right? That being yeah. uh, well, so you could you definitely get, want to bring the Outriders on. Because sudden charge is a thing. It is a thing, I suppose, but you can get two potentially two ranged attacks into someone's rear with the bags yeah, the, and the. 
the swords will disappear uh, mm. for, for the Kranigman trackers. Mm. <laughs> Almost certainly. So we've seen Howland go on to the uh, storm. Bags. Yeah. Yeah, and he takes the panic token off heal three. This is why I kind of didn't like that letters play because mm -hmm. it felt it just took the foot off the gas a little bit. Um, I'd have gone for the world of play. It's, it's it's riskier. It's riskier. You might not get it, but actually, in the end of the day, you're definitely not going to get it now. No. So. Uh, for anyone who is wondering, we've got Mahoney's Law playing against a border, uh, being streamed by um, by Chris Eustace and Le Sultan um, over on uh, the Leet Teddy channel. I'll post it in chat. Um, it's one of their first streams they've ever done. Uh, that, give them that, a bit of love. Is that running now? It is running now, yeah. So the game is playing at the same time. Um, obviously, just go over there, give them a bit of love if you can, guys. Um, you know, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. And uh, it's another Stark Mirror, believe it or not. Um, I'll give you an update from that game in case uh, you're interested. It is 3-2 currently to De Border uh, against Mahoney's Law. Uh, I've got it back up in the background. Uh, see in there. Evening. into the uh, starts on swords and you get two hits two hits and starts on swords Oof, that's a really bad roll um why do you roll four dice five dice what oh we got the summer's auto three hits of course um uh using um Brand's skin changing. Um, and he survives the panic test, but he does lose four wounds. He lost another so, rank. Sorry, how did that work? So, uh, if you look on to Bran and Hodor's uh, attachment card, mm -hmm. Brand's skin changing is when this unit or Summer makes a melee attack. Ah. And the defender suffers D3 additional automatic hits. Wow, okay. Um, I did not know that. Yes, Summer is an absolute machine when he needs to be. Um, and yeah, he took another rank off these Starts on Swords there. Which of course is not the end of the world, because it does mean that uh, Stark Looking Fury is free, yeah. Which is uh, actually not that big a bonus, really. No, have they activated yet? They have, yeah. And now we're seeing Walder coming out. This is where actually the Walder comes out in a bit more dangerous manner, because you could see Walder come out until they start Swan Swords. Um, minus one, plus one from Weirwood. Uh, so flat check on six. So is Ariakas, um who's first player this turn? It was Ariakas. Yeah, it was Ariakas. So he can kill Summer whenever he wants. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, he can. Yeah, he yeah. can. It's and more importantly, he will. Um, he will definitely do it this turn. Yeah. Um, I'd have thought. I, I don't imagine why he wouldn't.
I feel like, uh, yeah. So we're measuring potentially for another sudden charge, I suppose. Oh, no, we're looking for a, a ranged attack, yeah. From the uh, Storm Grow Max? Mm hmm. But uh, I'm not sure how we can do that without. Maybe it's a case of you just measuring it out to see. For, oh, no, is he measuring for traps? traps? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Score end line is currently 2 1 to Larks. Sorry, yeah. 2 1 to Larks, and this is what the NCU board looks like at the moment. Two slots open, the crown, uh, widely regarded as the worst zone in the game, and the horses, widely regarded <laughs> as the best zones. Lannister. Nah, yeah, I guess. Wealth is still better. <laughs> Wealth and letters. So. I'll be right back. My dog has dropped her ball underneath the cooker. <laughs> and you know what it's like when a dog loses her ball under the cooker. Yes, it is a very trying time. It is a trying time. So we've seen Locks try and position away from the, um, the beady eyes of the uh, Stormcrow Mercenary Archers. What's he going to do with ball there? Free movement. Yeah. Takes away the um, sort of the more devastating sides of uh, sudden impact. Uh, yeah, sudden impact and devastate. No, devastating impact and sudden charge uh, by doing so. Depending, I mean, not necessarily got those cards in hand, Hazariakis, but um, we. Uh, it, it does definitely turn off a lot of good cards for the stocks. Now, it looks like we're just going to get a bit of K KG manoeuvring up forward. Mickey? Yes. Do us a favour, would you just reposition your microphone a bit, mate? Sorry, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, she has, man. Because I uh, just keep moving up and down when I'm getting bloody dog stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've seen Walder take free manoeuvre. Um, and he's just kind of deciding where he wants, where he wants his free manoeuvre to be. Yeah. Trying to stay, I suppose, out of the, the immediate threat range of the... Uh, of the Stormcrow archers. And you don't need line of sights or traps, right? It's just... No, you don't. Yeah. Starting the movement. <laughs> the natural wind noises ASMR segment of the bat rep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? I'm doing my bit for the community, Daryl. What are you yeah. doing? Uh, that's not a great deal. <laughs> Um, what do we think? I mean, we're going to see uh, the Stormcrow mercenaries with Osha kind of, I guess, move up. I I personally believe these this unit should move up and threaten Shaggy Dog, to be honest, mm -hmm. this turn. But it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Um, because Ariakas is actually being massively out-activated right now. Um, and we're going to see Walder take crowns. This is going to be Walder onto Summer Shore. Surely, surely. Uh, and we see North remembers, yeah. North remembers take the activation token off the Kranigman. So Summer does die, but North remembers coming out. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be out of kill Starks on Source, potentially. That could be uh, a big rip. Yeah. A big, big rip. And that would be the second unit uh, off the board. We see the Panic Test come out. Ooh! Fail. Uh, three wounds. Not enough to take the rank. So we've got Locks first next turn as well. Uh, so it looks like yep. it's pretty much 
Hasta la vista for those sworn swords. I'd have thought so. Um, the Kragman can choose to just, like turn and move away and get yeah. out of the line of sight, leaving the option to Bran to just come in and plonk them on the head. Um, which, to be honest, I'd probably prefer. Prefer getting Bran the unit there and plonking them because then it puts them in a much better position to threaten the Bran Zerkers in the flank and even the uh, Stormcrow Merce in the rear. Where's Mira? Uh, for locks, Mira's up in the other Mira's side, in isn't the yeah. yeah. Oh, she's in the Sworn Shields. Mm -hmm. Tankiest right. unit that keeps the the trappers the trapper alive, yeah. alive. And of course, it makes the unit Kranigman, and it being a tankier unit means that it hangs around for longer to activate more of Howland's cards. Yes. Uh, score as it stands is two two. Uh, for a very I'm short. Not tell you who for, to. for a very short amount of time. Oh yeah, well, so we're looking at. Uh, so why was he be rolling there? I don't know. So that unit has activated. So. Yes. It should have only been three hits. It should have only been three hits. Yeah, I think they. Uh, yeah, he realizes yeah. that now. Yeah. Uh, so three hits. A four plus. That. Uh, okay, one. so we could still potentially survive. Yep. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. Oh, There's six base, base six, and they've got the way I would. So, all good. I I almost don't like that play from Larks. I would have very much just 150, 180 degree turn, move the six inches, 180 back to free up the slot for Brand Zerkers to come, uh, to Brand Sworn Swords come in and, and do some damage. Yeah. I don't actually feel like eight dice sitting on fours is statistically likely to kill the Sworn Swords there. In fact, mm. it is statistically unlikely. Because um, they're only going to get four hits, and they got less than that. But then of those four hits, they'll only actually kill two, mm -hmm. and then they're more likely to pass than they are to fail them rather. Um, okay, so we see the one wound summer activating on the back over there. Uh, interesting thing here, of course, is that the first activation Larks could do is... Why is Summer uh, one wound? Walder. Uh, but well, he do, he's not first player and he doesn't own the crown. Walder always does the one wound. That's why he's so good. He doesn't always uh, do the Right, got you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Walder, he can literally just activate Walder first thing next turn, take swords, mm -hmm. do the attack with the Kranigman to try and get another couple of kills onto the Sworn Swords if he, he wants. potentially kill two units. And kill Summer for another two point swing, which is uh, kind of ridiculous. Of course, the problem is with that if uh, if Ariakas has North Remembers in hand, of course, he just reactivates the unit he's just brought in on the flank, which will almost certainly be the Outriders. Yeah, which and could be trouble for true. someone. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Rickon grants additional VP when he dies as well, right? Correct. Rickon is an extra VP. Hence the reason that both of these Rickon units are kind of just like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. The Rickon, the Rickon, uh, if anyone didn't know, the Rickon in Swar Storm's Stormcrow Mercenaries is the cheapest way in the entire game to get two activations. Mm. In the shape of uh, Rickon and Osha inside Stormcrow Mercs, and of course, the one and only Shagda. The dog Shagda. that is Shaggy. The black one. The dangerous one. Um, it is Araka's turn now. Uh, you've seen this move from um, the Rickon unit, turning to face whatever might be coming on in the flank. So this is like <laughs> Larks now preparing for hell, and we see a swift advance come out. Um, oh. He does not control horses, so he cannot get super close. He is going to be in the uh, front as well, which does mean he cannot charge Shaggy Dog. Yeah, I'm not um, entirely sure that uh, I think this play is that great. Um, the thing is, he can pivot like this, and he can actually put his rear 
uh, I don't know, you can put make it so this rear was unchargeable and thus it wasn't in threat. Uh, this puts a lot of pressure on Shaggy Dog to get out of the zone. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know if Larks cares about that. No, I don't think he does. And especially considering what we were talking about before. Yeah, I think he just skedaddles out of there. And that Stormcrow Merc unit isn't even... Um, isn't even a Kranig unit, so it's not even got the threat of, uh, pardon me, any Howland cards. Uh, so the, the Howland cards always work, they just don't get the tokens. Yeah, and not but not having the tokens, I think, is, is relevant. Yeah. Uh, although, actually, the one for that particular token is not, uh, that particular card is not actually that relevant to killing the dog. Which one? Bog Devil? Uh, yeah, Bog Devil doesn't put a vulnerable on, it's uh, weakened, I believe. Which doesn't help him kill a dog, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. He's looking at going for Mira's unit. She's not the end of the world if you can get a flank charge onto Mira's unit, to be honest. Yeah. Um... Just control the horses, so he can do a charge from... Well, by definition, it will have to be 12 inches, which would put him inside Mira trap range, which could potentially kill him. Uh, so, yeah, he obviously chooses not to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a much wiser play. The other way, he might have just given up an easy VP for no reason. Okay. Um, so just a quick update from uh, Mahoney's Law versus uh, De Borders game. It's looking really bad for Mahoney's Law. Uh, he's currently 6-2 down in the Stark Mirror. Yikes. And uh, he's down, so he's, he's got f he's got five Four activations. Yeah, he's got five activations on the board as opposed to one, two, three, four, five, six. No, so he's only one activation down. Uh, and actually, he's ahead on NCU activations by the look of it. Uh, I think so, yeah. I think it's even Stevens, but. But yeah, points wise, it's not. It's okay. not great. Um, so, so we've already seen. Um, we've already seen. Oh, no, we haven't this turn, have we? We haven't seen. Have we? Yeah, it was this turn. Skin changing has already been used this turn, hasn't it? Yes, skin changing has been used by uh, Summer when he ran in. Extra dice. Roll nine. Yep. Uh, so he rolls extra dice. It's going to be how many hits is that? Nine hits, yeah. Uh, no, no, he just hasn't no. rolled. He hasn't rolled enough dice. Oh, um, no, it's the he rolling six dice uh, because of Bran Hodor disorderly charge once per game. Um, so he gives a minus two dice and it's a disorderly. Ah. Um, which is uh, Hodor's hold the door ability. Hold the door. Although, now I know, uh, so he loses skin changer now though, right? Uh, yes, he uh, skin changer is no longer affected by Brand's unit, interestingly. It's Brand's unit that can't be targeted by uh, Brand's skin changing, not... Um, Shaggy Dog. No, it was Summer. Uh, Summer. So Summer can still be targeted by Brand's skin changing ability. Uh, but I don't think that's going to matter, because I think Summer's going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a bit irrelevant. Okay, so so, are you ex so I'm 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 expecting to see uh, something going straight onto the swords here from Larks, and uh, as he said, probably Walder if he wants to be as brutal as possible. So they have to redeploy units. So Larks can redeploy first because he is first player, and he chooses to play what looks like to be very safely with his Stark outrider deployment. 
Um, so if he had deployed or... in, oh. if he had deployed <laughs> into um into the side that uh, Rick on Osher or for um Ariakis, he would have taken that zone, wouldn't he? Because that's only a five he point unit. Done. Yeah. Yeah, he would have done. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he would have kept it. Um, that's obviously something we've got to remember. Mm -hmm. Just because you control it at the start or whatever doesn't actually mean you control it at the end. Um, I'm interested in uh, this Outrider deployment mm -hmm. facing. Um, yeah, me too. You might be thinking about how we can like orient orient it in a way that orientate it orientate orient it in a way that uh, makes less of a threat. Um, but I don't really know if he's uh, planning with this. No, I can't. I guess it means if um, if Ariakas deploys his own outriders in that flank, um, Larks is saying I have a sudden charge potential threat. Mm. Uh, so Got don't look at me. Um, well, <laughs> there's a star cover. Yeah, there's seeing. a lot of um, posture in here, isn't there? That is not the Stark Outrider play you want to see. No. That is. Uh, that's really stupid if Ariakas has done that way around. He's, uh, why is he facing the, the wrong direction? Yeah, he. Does he know he's facing the wrong direction? Because with Larks, Larks can make that play. Ariakas does not need to do that, and he is instead facing the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. This is going to go really badly. Uh, two wounds to uh, the Stark Sworn Swords going uh, Stark Fury against the Zerkers now. Uh, so hitting on threes with the D3 from uh, Bran and Hodor in this unit. Oh, that is not a good roll. That mm, is no. only five, five, six, seven, eight hits. <laughs> well... It's not a not a good rule in the fact that it shouldn't have done more, but it eight hits is still solid when there's only eight in the unit left. Yes. And they're are they vulnerable? Uh, yes, yes, they are. It's fives and sixes. I'm not sure why they're vulnerable. Ah, they Northern Ferocity. Northern Ferocity, yeah. yeah. And so oh, Sundering as well. So well it doesn't matter, they're six plus, aren't they? Oh, no, they're, four, no, they're five. five plus, yeah. But that's a dead unit. All fails. Smack. One more point for Larks. And um, it's 5 4 to Larks. Uh, I don't know what the uh, audience is thinking, but it looks like end line that your buddy Ariakas is, is struggling here. But he's, he's keeping in the game. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not looking brilliant. Um, more importantly, here we see an overrun coming out from Larks' unit now. Uh, he can do what he wants, overrun where he wants. Uh, Surge Forth. Surge Forth, yeah. Overrun Surge Forth. Same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, because you can charge after one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, as a bit, almost a bit of a surprise, um, we were expecting the Stark Swan Sword to disappear, but actually, um, we've just watched uh, probably Ariakas's best unit disappear, as well as Summer, and then next turn without. So, he, really, he can't even threaten the charge. With the sworn swords now because of Mira, there's a chance that they just die to our traps. Yes, um, there's a full chance that it just evaporates. Mm -hmm. I um I really like here. Uh, by the way, I really like um activating the Kranigman and just doing a two inch shift to shoot the sworn swords again, mm -hmm. or even just. With the uh, with the surge forth from the start swan swords positioning so they can go into the flank mm -hmm. uh, of the other start swan sword unit, uh, finishing them off, and then turning the Kranigman around and shooting the outriders in the rear. Like shooting the outriders in the rear this turn, I feel like is uh, is a super important thing you should do. Um, so do you think do you think he's realised that he's facing the wrong direction? Uh, I hope he has. Ah. Huh. What's happening? 
Why is he take why is he taking two wounds? Oh he I think he ha, lol, I think he didn't realise he put them the wrong way around. Uh he plays sudden charge, I believe. No uh, yeah, but he he's put two wounds on his own unit off oh, from the traps. From the traps, yeah. yeah. Um and he's uh he's sudden charge dev impact, mm -hmm. using Sansa to pull the uh, sudden charge back to hand. Mm -hmm. Um Interesting. So this is the kind of like what we talked about, the potential threat mm -hmm. um, here from uh, from the Starks, bringing that unit back on in the rear and being able to do this. But we also thought he deployed the Stark Outriders the wrong way around. Yeah. As did they. Yeah. And then we saw a uh, surge fourth leading back around to, um, to behind the... Sworn Swords, uh, they should have an activated token on the right. Uh, on which unit? Oh, I don't see the tokens, but maybe it's because I wasn't... Oh yeah, no, it's just the, the reset means that you don't see the token. Yeah, the Outriders got a token on them. Yeah. Um, Bogdell Lambush, D3 plus 2, within long range of a Kranach, and we are within long range of a Kranach. We are indeed. D3 and minus 1 to the defensive, so nice. So 5 hits. Although, actually, is he within long range? Oh, wow. Sure yeah, yeah, he definitely is, yeah. So it's on three. that, on sword unit, yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's uh, 3 wounds. Mm -hmm. It's easy 3 wounds. And then some... And then trappers. Only one more wound, yeah. still enough to knock him down. But Freeze they're going to be playing Dev Impact. So they get the reroll, they then get two extra hits. So this is um, Lox's second Dev Impact, right? Yeah, and we see there that the uh, it comes off with a six. They're really loving this charge. And um, I imagine four dice with Crit Blow. Um, uh, so, get... Yeah, four dice. Plus the two wounds. The, yeah, no, it's only, it's only two hits because he doesn't have horses. Oh, sorry, yeah, um, two hits. But he's going to be... Oh, no, it's five dice on three ranks. Five dice hitting on threes with crit blow um, and an extra two hits. Oosh. Oh, wow, okay. Look, he's re-rolling. Uh, well, five, five hits. Five hits. And we're six. Five plus. Five plus. Five plus. <gasps> what? <laughs> Woo! This is like my game versus George from the uh, first brother league. Wow! Uh, the amount of five plus saves I made was just. Oh, <laughs> there we go. The, crit. the thing is, is that one more failed dice roll and they'd have died. Mm -hmm. Like one more failed armor save, that's just a dead unit. And fa them failing the panic test, to be honest, is not unexpected. So, like, wow. Um, that is uh, something. <laughs> that is a big sad day for for Lux there. Um, he doesn't even have Walder this turn. So just boulder that last wound off because he used it on He's summer. already used it, yeah. Um. Cards instead of trying to save that unit. Uh. Crowns are still open. I think either way that it comes because the panic is if he if he heals the unit, it's still only going to go to four wounds, yeah. which is still enough to kill it with a panic. But he feels any failed panic kills him. Yeah, it's only a crit fail that kills him with the bags, right? True, but it's still a fail. To the point, like, you know, in the nicest sense, like, he might as well just try and play it so he doesn't fail. <laughs> um, he could alternatively just, just take on the crowns himself and done a panic check on the start some sword unit. I feel like, um, uh, d could he not have fit his base through... Past the Kranigs to behind the... No, he couldn't have, could he? No. Yeah. 
from, right? We saw a North Remembers. So the Outriders that are in the rear of all of uh, Ariaka's stuff have been reactivated. Have they? Yeah. That's a um, big rip for Ariakas' pretty much entire army. That's a unit anyways. Yeah, so uh, we, uh, as people know, we try not to call things early on this channel, but... Uh, <laughs> it's not looking great. It's that doesn't mean it's over. No, it, it's not. It's far from... Well, it's not it's far, far from... from it's not far from, but it's so he's currently he's currently in control of three. Um, he's currently in control of three zones, and unless uh, unless Ariakas can do something about it, um, which the chances are he can't, he's going to win at the end of this turn. Uh, yes, yeah. he. He could potentially get another point from killing the Start Swarm Swords. He gets a, and then he gets two points from controlling zones. Yeah. And it has he don't used, think Ariakas right. can do anything about it. No. Um, I mean, he could get three points from controlling zones. He could get three points from controlling zones, but I actually think that he... Uh, yeah. He can kill the Start Swarm Swords to, to guarantee it. So, uh, interestingly, we've seen, and I've, I've always spoke about, uh, very typically, the conversations that I have with people when I talk about factions is the decks, because I, f I feel, uh, and coming from uh, playing Free Folk, and me and you have had loads and loads of discussions about this, Mickey, um, but the strength of decks, I think, really, to me, is uh, what makes an army. Um, and... I think coming just like you know is a without the commander cards just as a base deck, the stock deck is so optimized. It is unbelievable. It's got the best parts of everybody's deck. You get activations back like you do from Night's Watch. You know you're getting free charges like you do from um the Targaryens. No Targs, Targs, yeah, yeah. yeah Targs have got some yeah. charge. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've I got think they did. yeah, you've got morale buffs. Uh, you the only thing that you haven't got, I think, is like out and out healing, right? Yeah, no direct healing. No direct healing unless you take uh, Erod. Um, uh, you've got um, a build, uh, you know, adding abilities like uh, free folk. You've got uh, swift advance like free folk. Um, so the thing for me. Sudden charge. Yeah. So the two, two, the two best cards in the game: sudden charge and dev, uh, dev impact. Personally, swift, swift advance. People underrate swift advance. Yeah. They're all maneuverability cards, and maneuverability cards are by far the best in the game. <laughs> oh, if insanely. If you don't think that they're the best in the game, then why do people think harm is the best free folk? To them? Totally. And and the the thing, <laughs> I, I think that um, what people need to realize is that. They're good in a faction whose unit quality tends to be very low, like uh, free folk. Like, let's not get it twisted. Free folk units are trash, and they're meant to be trash, but in the sense that they work in a different way to other units. But if you give all that extra mobility to units who are super efficient and can do a lot of work, um, then you are really causing problems for people. Yeah, uh, and basically. This oh, game, this game has been decided on two sudden charges, two devastating impacts, realistically. Yeah. Um. And I mean, the the Kranigs did get some work down, work done down here, but those two big plays, uh, the two sudden impacts, the two devastating charges, have been sort of critical to the game. Yeah, I do. I do feel Larks could um could still obviously just charge this unit and win the game pretty much off this charge. Um, the this Stormcrow play is actually necessary mm -hmm. to stop them from scoring uh, three. Yeah, yeah, because the Stormcrow and Shaggy scoring having the same points difference means that that zone is now uh, effectively equal. Mm -hmm. The main problem is is that actually he can actually charge with Osha's unit into um, Rickon 
Yeah. Oh, got you, Chris. Chris is uh, North he Columbus has healing. Yeah, yeah. So you can get your three wounds back from there. So we're going to see the charge from the Outriders come in here. It's uh, definitely uh, in. That's it, yeah. This unit dies, and it is actually just straight up. It's 100% game over, yeah. nothing that uh, Ariakas can do. And he goes, Lux goes to eight, and then he just maneuvers the Outriders to be majority where the out enemy Outriders are, and he gets the points. Uh, a couple of misses. Uh, one miss. Seven hits. So seven hits. Yeah. So he's got he's, he's got to make four hits. he's got to make four he four plus. Three, uh, he actually makes five. Um, he loses three on average, and that's a terrible roll. Uh, yeah. So he loses six wounds, and the unit disappears from the game. Yeah. That's and Ariak, uh, Larks goes up to ten. Mm -hmm. uh, Ariaka stays on five, and uh, Larks doesn't actually have to even risk anything no. uh, to do it. He could charge Shaggy. And uh, and Stormcrow Mercs into Osha's unit over there. Yeah. Um, to try and pull it another point, but it's already a crushing victory, so. Yeah. Why? So I think they've already added up the end of round points. Um, yeah. They, they have. yeah. Um, so I believe that that is the game. Um, do you want to jump over and see if they're ready for a post-game chat? Yeah. Yeah. Can do. Yeah. Sorry about the um, the connection problems that we had, guys. Uh, typical of been doing work on the old uh, internet lines and stuff around here today, so no good, no good. But uh, interesting to watch mirror match. I think sometimes being a bit of a pleb myself, I I think I'm not quite at the the. Oh, Hi, oh hello, hello. hello. Hey, man. Hi, folks. How are we doing? Good. 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 Good game. Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, uh, quite the ballet to watch, actually. There was a lot of... We were talking about um, the, mm -hmm. the sheer amount of lines that were drawn on the board and the, you know, the the, the pre-game calculations and things. And I think, obviously, the, the game came down to a lot of minutiae, really. It was very, a lot of very s sort of small details which made big differences. Um, so... Uh, Ari, I guess, how do you feel it went? I think it was a very smooth game. You know, we uh, played it out as best as we could. I, I'm trying to, th I was just asking if there was any like t giant mistake that I made that was wrong. Because um, I always like to an analyze that first, you know, like, mm -hmm. was there a play that I made that wasn't great? So, Larks, feel free to jump in. You know, I feel like maybe, I mean, we both kind of had a stand up with our, with our Stormcore units, the uh, yeah. mercenaries. Mm -hmm. They were kind of a watch. Um, I'm just trying to think, you know, was my gamble of trying to sudden charge you wrong? Because the only way that you were going to get me was with devastating impact. And I figured even if you had it, I had a counter charge ready with the yep. sword swords, right? So I don't know if that was the wrong play because it kind of led us into this, you know, melee right, right, right in the beginning. Yep. I mean, it's free, from my perspective, at least, I was um, happy that you did it um, because... You know, the last game I lost against you, the problem was that my that my Grand Augment didn't came in the game. And by this move, I that somehow freed them because I could um, bind up your Outriders, and so they could do their work, and they did on this flank. So I was um, grateful for this, but I see that you did it, because um, getting through my, like killing them early would have been a great play, and you would have been lurking around in my uh, backfield here, so that would have been very, very good, yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was the gamble, obviously, right? I, is that if I got the sudden charge off freely, and then I got the swords next turn right away, I'd be in your back line with a sudden charge in my graveyard, ready to yeah. recharge you again, yeah. right? So that was kind of the gamble, but you, you were able to... Uh, I mean, you, you had the devastating impact, and it, it's fair that you had it because you drew with the envelope as well, right? So yeah. you had a good chance of having some a counter. Maybe maybe if I can uh, go in here, because what I found, and I thought very, really a lot about this, that um, the last game when we played uh, on, on the league, you know, um, like I always thought getting the second turn is better because um, you can save your dog and all that. But I, what I found is if you do this, actually, you lose envelope two times, and that's hard in a stark matchup. So I was kind of okay with getting first turn, and that's 
why I also put down the the cost pile here to give you some some uh, thinking and options. So yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's a very interesting dance when Howland and Walder face Howland and Walder because, yeah. as you said, you know, yeah, you get to kill the dog if you go uh, first on round two, but it also means that you're around. Um, your round two opening move is the envelope. I mean, is the is the money bag, right? Yeah. Money bag, and 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 it's not an optimal move right away. So it's definitely a very interesting dance. Yeah, yeah. And what I found is, if you do this, um, because you can, you will really attempt to kill my dog then. And um, what I have to do is um, vulnerabling your dog so that you probably go on uh, money bag <laughs> because everybody uh, wants to save it. So that's pro what people do, and then that opens up horses. And this now opens up very aggressive play in round one, which is, then gives you options in round two mm. and makes killing the dog harder. So yeah. that's yeah, the think, interesting. Uh, yeah. On the back of that, to, to both of you, um, is obviously Carlo chose the game modes. Uh, in case you, you didn't know, he chose the game <laughs> modes to kind of like uh, to move away from Starks. He chose game modes that we, he thought traditionally wouldn't favor Starks. Um, and uh, one thing that we've picked up a lot in these games um, is that Stark Wolves tend to actually be, um, let's say, a little bit of a, almost a hindrance. Uh, they obviously give you the activation advantage, but they're two VPs that actually, in yeah, this kind of game mode, make a big difference. It's much more risk than, than reward in this game mode, uh, as opposed to the normal sort of benefits versus gains. Uh, I think they contribute nothing points wise um in yeah. into the zones and then obviously they're there especially when you you you're both taking Walder, you know, in the space of four turns you're both guaranteed to lose two dogs unless you start healing it. Uh I mean, yeah. go, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go on. Um I was just thinking that I mean, um you're right. This game mode tends to be, at least from my experience, my little experience now, to be quite close normally in points wise. So that is a big difference. Mm -hmm. But I feel like um you can really use it as a North Members trigger. So if you don't if you aren't unlucky to not um draw it until around two, three or whatever, uh, you can kind of play off from this. So mm -hmm. you can use it and that's a good thing to um get your units that come in going so i feel it's not that big of a hindrance yeah i mean yeah, I, I tend to agree just because um hodor is, is staple in most dark armies and whether or not he's an extra activation is kind of just a, is, is just kind of a bonus and i think in like a stark versus stark matchup the um the dogs are definitely a bit more vulnerable because units that respawn are actually dangerous because of sudden charge mm -hmm. or if they're mm -hmm. you know crying dogs they can shoot with the uh with the uh move again or the horse uh, sorry, the horse or the attack zone. I, I wonder if that's true against other uh, other factions. Like, if I was playing a Baratheon or a Lannister, I, I don't know if my dogs would feel as vulnerable. So, like, this game, I kept my dogs kind of clustered in the center mostly because I was worried of his respawning units killing me again. But what other races can really do that besides Starks? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, what I really like is that this game mode favors uh, ranged units. That's pretty cool because... You can play offensively with rage units, get them killed, and then come back. Yes, and, uh... yeah. So that's something that we did speak about. I think I think something that we've definitely taken in in this game as well was as far as the faction, the you know, Stark faction goes, it was much more of a bloody battle than what we had seen earlier in in games that we've cast from this uh, first round. So after watching the Baratheon Night's Watch game, which was essentially um, people slapping each other with bare hands instead of you know <laughs> like swords and bows. Um, and, and nobody dying, and it really came down to who could get into whatever zone or who could have the most points left on the table. It was really, um, it was nice to see the game mode fought more for um, high impact activations with the chances of kills, other than I'm going to try and edge 52% of my base into this zone to stop you from scoring it whilst I still score mine. And it, it certainly was a lot more... Um, uh, sort of exciting, I suppose, is is the word. And there was there was a lot less predictable plays, and a lot more um a lot more sort of combat and death and things. Like that. And that's always good in my books. So, you know, that's that's what we'll come here to see. So, but yeah, thank you very much, lads. I really appreciate you letting me stream it. It was have, good, good to watch. Go on. Have one more question for Ariakas. Okay, um, it's now two one to Larks. He won the first one. He's come back. He's taken the lead. 
there's obviously going to be more opportunity for you guys to face off. Um, I think so. Yeah. Ariakas, are you going to learn and not take Stormcrow archers, instead take Crown and Trackers? <laughs> no, 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 no. I stand by my decisions. I stand by my decisions. <laughs> I, I no regrets, no regrets. But <laughs> I, I, the trilogy may become a quintology or a septology. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Is this the, oh, is this, is this it? You've lost the best of three, and you're like, oh, best of five, best of five. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that, that was just practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like the number. No, we need to change it again. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, you did, like, that's, the, that's the rules. Yeah, yeah. and you did, yeah, like, because Ariaka is saying there was practice. Actually, if, we, if you would have um, heard us, like, playing the game, we were really, like, both on the same end every time, like thinking about the best move to do and so on. So mm -hmm. um, it feels really like a very, very um, high skill training playing against them. That's so cool. Yeah. And uh, I can, yeah, I would, I would love to play seven, ten, whatever games against them. So. I think, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I agree. It's, it's like playing like, like a mirror of myself, you know, someone who knows all my tricks, someone who can predict all my moves. It's, mm -hmm. it's really like, like it's, as tough as it gets you're certainly um you're certainly much better at identifying the weaknesses in lists or factions against people who know the faction inside out um again so we used to uh, me and seno uh, scott uh, were both street fighter players played it a lot and one of the best ways to learn a character was to play against the character and just play against it against it against it all the time because you pick up so much from watching what other people do and um you know when you're saying in your head i would definitely do this now uh, and they don't because they've got something other you know other plans in the head or you know just slight nuances to plays Um, it definitely it, it, it can help improve what is already a very high level of play to a, a even better level of play. But certainly, you two guys are the 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 probably the two best star players that we've watched before. So definitely, yeah. definitely. So yeah, thanks again, lads. So I'm gonna uh, do a small uh, merchandise plug and YouTube plug and everything like that. So you guys, can, I'll jump at the Discord so you can continue your chat. Um, but thanks, thanks again, and uh, we'll look forward to streaming some more of your matches. Awesome. Yeah, Cheers, guys. Thank Take care. So, um, I will quickly load this up before everyone goes. Uh, I know you're sick of hearing it, but I've got to do it, man. So, basically, you're looking at our merch shop, which is www.northernrealms.co.uk forward slash uh, store. Uh, and we have a range of awesome t-shirts, vests, hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts, sweaters or jumpers as we call them. Um, we've got stickers, mugs, masks. They're drawn by local tattoo artists. Uh, the Drowned God design was drawn by my friend Greg Scott from Iron Hand Tattoo. And the other uh, was drawn by the, so the, the house logos um for stark lannister well there's two knights ones knights watch ones technically um lannister baratheon uh, they're all done by kirsty brown who's an absolutely fantastic artist and tattoo, tattooist up in the northeast um so definitely check those out and check her out uh, what i'll do is i will um leave a, a link down in the chat for you to go and check it out 